Hey, what is going on everybody? It's Nothing With Skills here. And in today's video, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the settings I currently use in the Division 2. And some of these settings you guys don't even know about because I get the question a lot in a lot of my comments. And one in particular is the damage numbers that you guys are seeing right here. I see this a lot. A lot of people have been asking me about this. So what I decided to do was let me just do a full settings video for you guys. And that way you guys know all the settings I currently use on the Division 2 including these damage numbers so let's get into it now what we want to do is go to your menu and then go all the way down to the bottom where it says settings that is where you are going to be able to mess with all your settings in game now the first setting i did want to address were the damage numbers because that was like one of the bigger ones and then we'll go back to gameplay get into controls and get into everything now remember this is going to be um, my console settings so this one a lot of these settings you can kind of look on your PC and find those settings. But if you're looking for more detail on graphics um, and stuff like that, that's probably not going to be this video for you guys that are on PC because a lot of the settings on here are a little bit different. But like the UI settings gameplay, if you're using a controller on PC, those settings will all be the same. And then just gameplay settings will be the same. So let's go into UI. So the UI, the main one you guys have been asking me about are the combat numbers. How do you get your numbers to pop up on um, console? Because we just recently got this. If you go to combat text, well, I think we recently just got this. If you go to combat text, you want to put this right here where it says floating. And that's going to make the numbers pop up right next to the enemy. Nice big numbers. So then you can really see how hard you are hitting. Um, 2D, I wouldn't recommend. It's really small. You barely see the damage number. It's worse than what um, the default is with the random. So I would go with floating, and that's exactly what you guys have been asking me over and over. Hey, how do you get this to work like that? How do you get those numbers to pop up? And this is it right here. Now, what I want you guys to remember is if you guys don't like having all those numbers pop up next to the enemy, well, then you want to stick with um, the just the default, and that's just going to be like when you hit a headshot, that one number pops up there. But I do like how it floats. And then you can constantly see how, what kind of numbers you're hitting with those ARs, um, with your with your skills. It really works really good. Now, another setting that a lot of people have been asking about is how do you get the timer to pop up on the top left? Well, if you're in the raid and you want to see how long it takes you, whether it takes you one hour, 10 hours to beat the raid as a group, well, the raid speed one UI is for you. You just put this on yes, and then you'll see at the very top left, it breaks down each section, each boss, so you can kind of see how long it takes you to beat each part and that way you can kind of improve on it if you're trying to do that as a clan or with your friends and just trying to figure that all out but yeah that's another little cool feature that i noticed they added recently i think this was a while ago but i recently just started putting that on there now if you go to the custom ui um, for this is actually really cool so if you go up here like say if you want to go to any any part on the map so we're gonna let's try to pick one um, so right here, you see your little mini map at the top left and you can move this around wherever you want. That's what's really cool about it. So if you decide, you know what, I don't really like this like this. Well, you could put it right in the middle if you want, or you can put it on the bottom left. You can put whatever you want. You can move this all around. So all of these right here, you can move around. And there's also some custom layouts that you can use. So for the UI itself, these are the main three that I mess with. So I know a lot of you guys asked about the combat text. But that's it right there. Let's get into gameplay. So for gameplay, guys, I want to go into some settings because I know a lot of you guys still don't use these. So for on-call status, you know, like if you want to be able to help out um, backup agents in the Division 2, you can put this on to all um, receive calls for backup from nearby agents. So this would be everybody who's playing and then they, um, they call for backup. Now, if you're tired of listening to that backup call, you can just go here and turn it off. If you want to do it just for your friends and your clan members, so you'll get the call only when they go down, well, you can do that too. I usually keep mine off. Sometimes I turn it on to see, but if you don't want to help anybody, you just get tired of that um, um, receiving that call for backup, well, then just turn it no right here. That's, that's what I would do. I think once you guys get further along in the game and you guys have been playing a while, I would really make men turning off hints. They get kind of annoying and it's not something you really need to have. So that is another setting that you can hit off if once you get tired of getting those in-game hints, once you become a veteran in the game. Show damage numbers. You can turn this on and off. I always make that make sure that's on and that's also going to help with those floating numbers, right? And then show connectivity um, info. So if you go right here, let me just show you real quick. If you go right here where it says social and you see where it says US East, right? So it shows that I'm in a US East server. 
Um, that right there will not pop up. That one right there will not pop up unless you turn that on right here. So where is that? Um, yeah, so you got to make sure that's on. Yes, if you put no, that will no longer be on there. So that's another setting. Now, you can actually change all of this. I This is all default pretty much, so I leave that. I don't really mess with that. This show skills on group frame. I love this because if you're in a big group, like especially a raid, or if you're in a four-man group and you want to see what the other people are running, but say you just randomly match make for a uh, legendary or heroic, and you're looking at what people are running, you're not sure what kind of skills they're running, and you're like, man, maybe I should supplement um, what they're running. Well, if you put this on, you'll see their skills on the bottom part next to their name. If you don't have that on, you know, well, you won't. It's usually no, but I would put yes, and that's a really good um, little feature you could put there. You can also um, put the skill cooldown time on there, yes. Um, exit photo mode when taking damage. You can put yes, no, that's up to you. And then everything else is pretty, pretty standard. Now, a really big change that I did, and this came out a long time ago. I think this was like in the earlier patches that some people just don't know and they run at zero is the field of vision. I love keeping mine on 25 because you get that access to more. You see more on the left and right. It also makes you look like you move faster. Some people will always ask me, why does your character always look like it's moving so fast? Well, 25, 25 makes you, you get to see everything from left to right. You get that nice uh, field division view. You see more and your character looks like it's moving more. I like it. Um, it does make the characters look a little bit smaller when you're aiming. So some people like getting like a little sweet spot in the middle somewhere because the NPCs that they're shooting at are a little bit smaller. I play on a monitor, so playing at 25-25 doesn't bother me. If you're playing on a big screen, I'm pretty sure 25-25 will not bother you either. But I definitely like both of these. For motion sickness, that's up to you. And then that's up to you too. Another um, small changes that I want to get into are the controls. So we went over the main gameplay, the UI settings, audio. That's that's up to you. But controls is the next big one that we can change that can make a difference. Um, for the parkour mode, I usually leave this on no. Um, I do not like it where I'm running and it automatically jumps over things. It can get you killed. Um, some people like that. But I don't like that. Now, um, the auto run one. So say if I do do auto run where I just um, double click my button, my, my sprint button. I don't mind that because I know most of the times I'm just running and I don't want to hold my controller down. And that's what's really cool. The auto run feature on here is really good. So if you have this on, yes, when you just plan on like sprinting across the map or something because you're not going to fast travel. Well, that's a really cool feature just to keep on because that's the only time it's going to um, automatically jump over anything when you're auto running and you hardly ever do that unless you're going for long distance. For camera sensitivity, I leave them at 15, aim sensitivity at 15 too. This is really personal preference on how you like playing, but 15, 15 is my go-to. Scope sensitivity modifier is at five. I believe that's default. I feel like it's it doesn't, um, when I'm scoped in on controller, I, do, I, I can't have it all with really speed up because getting those headshots is a little bit easier when it's at five. Cooler, um, controller vibrations off for me, I don't even have a rumble in my scuff gaming controller, so it doesn't really matter if I turn it on or off. But if you have one, I usually keep it off. Um, the button layout, that's up to you. I leave mine on default. And then your dead zone, that's just, you just have to figure that out with your controller. So zero, I believe, is for like brand new controllers. If you see, if you notice any kind of stick drift, then you want to up up this up a little bit. But yeah, that's, that's personal preference. You, the, these settings aren't going to be the same for everyone. And that's just something you need to do. Toggle to sprint. Toggle between needing to hold down sprint or just needing to tap the button. I love being able just to tap the button instead of having to hold down. You just hit yes, and then I can sprint. I, I like that. You just tap it once. You'll start sprinting. And then that's personally how I like having it. Some people don't, but yeah, sit. Um, the 180 sprint turn, um, I like having this one on too. So it's like when you do that 360 sprint um, turn, you can just turn real quick. It's pretty easy. We go down the enable auto run. This is the one I was telling you works great with the parkour um, jumping where double tap to automatically move forward. So once you start running, you'll start to like sprint and then it automatically jump over barriers in front of you. So that's why I think those really work together. So those 100% really work together. Uh, movement can exit cover 100%. I like this. 
Um, that's like when you get into cover, you just hit your joystick. If not, it asks you to push a button like X or something to get off a of cover, which you don't want that, especially if you're on controller. Um, cover, move around, corner press, um, button press. I would put no, just automatically moving your joystick will automatically move you around the cover. Uh, move around corner speed, you want to put that on fast, the faster you can move around corners is always better. Aim assist, turn aim assist on or off. On, on console, most games all have aim assist. Just leave it on. It's not, it, you're not going to really notice the difference um, and it's default, so just leave it. Um, grenade aim assist on. Hold to aim, I always recommend that because having, say if you toggle it, all um put you, you put no here if you hit it once you'll be locked in that aim position i like just holding l2 letting go uh, holding letting go and that'll let me in and out cancel skill while aiming this is great so like if you're about to throw a skill you want to cancel it just hit your aim button and it automatically cancel it so you don't have to waste throwing the skill out and then enter cover on long press i put no some people enjoy this test it out yourself and like i said with the graphics there's really nothing on here. If you have an HDR, um, a monitor or a TV, you could put that on, but I don't, um, have an HDR monitor. I'm getting one, so it should be coming soon. So I'll be using that, um, neutral lighting. I usually have off some people like on for that darker setting, but brightness, sharpness, this is really going to be all bet. Um, it's really just going to be your personal preference and everything else is really, um, really up to you guys. Everything else on here isn't anything that you really need to have. Yeah, that's it. That Those are my um, current settings. Remember, the big one is going to be this floating combat text. I hope I hope this um, video was answering all those settings questions, but this is it. This is the settings questions. It's probably the last settings video I will make unless they somehow change all the settings. But yeah, this is it right here. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I appreciate the support, guys. I'll see you guys in the next Division 2 video. Until then, nothing more.